Hi right, folks, Doc here. Now that the madness that was the Diesel Weasel build has come to an end, at least for now anyways, I suspect I'm not done. Is ever anything ever really done? Who knows? Anyways, now that that's come to an end, uh, I can get back into doing some of the other things that I was doing and wanted to start doing. And uh, here and now today we're going to be working on the Fugazi build. That's the, uh, the Murray wide body lawn tractor that I picked up recently that I'm going to do as a rally build. So today, we're going to be modifying the hood. Stay tuned. Oh, look, we're back. All right, so as I've been burning brain cells on Fugazi here, trying to figure out what's what and how I'm going to do things, uh, I keep looking at the front end and I'm going to be doing, you know, a custom bumper, probably changing out the front wheels, custom exhausts that, you know, that's going to affect the front end. Uh, there may be a winch of some kind on there. Either way, long and the short of it is, is the front end's going to be affected. Now, as you guys know, when you open the hood, the nose tips forward, way forward, and if you've got some kind of bumper assembly there, that's going to be an interference problem. Uh, any of you guys that follow along on these various mower builds know that you run into this stuff pretty frequently. Um, I put mules hood on hood pins and just lifted the whole damn thing up and I believe others have done that with these Murrays too. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I don't want to do hood pins because I don't want to have to lift the hood off each and every time I go to so much as check the oil. That was something that proved to be a pain in the rear end with mule, uh, especially with the fuel tank being under the hood. You know, each and every time I wanted to check the fuel, I'm taking the hood off, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to deal with pins. I don't want to lift the hood off. And I'm definitely going to have a bumper something getting in the way. So how am I going to deal with that? How I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to go all car hood on this thing. No, not like the old Hondas and stuff where the hood flipped forward like this stupid thing does because the hood flipped forward. Look at that. Ah. No, I am going to make the hood open properly. That's right. So I've picked up a couple of hinges and I'm going to take a look at this thing because I haven't exactly 100% figured it out yet, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this thing open like a proper hood. So, here's what I've got for hinges. Gonna have to figure out the latch thing later. Hell, I haven't figured out any of it yet. I just knew that I needed hinges. So just for a couple of bucks from the Home Depot there, just picked up a couple of basic utility hinges. And of course it comes with wood screws which are worthless. So the basic idea here is we're gonna put the hinges at the trailing edge of the hood and you know make the leading edge come up instead of the other way around. Okay, so what I've gone and done here is I've placed the hinges folded up underneath the closed hood. And I mean, when it's all said and done, the hood is going to rest, because of the thickness of the hinges, the hood is going to rest almost a quarter of an inch up from where it was, and I think I can live with that. Um, I could go to great lengths to inset the hinges and get this thing sitting completely flush, and it's just, it's not worth all the aggra added aggravation. All we want to do is get the hood sitting out. So I've taken a couple of measurements off this little handhold here just to try and get my hinges that's about an inch and a quarter on either side try and get my hinges about equally located just going to take a little sharpie marker here black on black yeah that's visible and just make some little marks so that i can locate them again and i start drilling holes and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the hinges out <coughs> open them up lay them on the surface of the hood and we're going to mark the holes for how this bolts to the hood now the next thing about the hinges that I selected and a lot of them is that both plates match for holes so now that I've got this located on the top of the hood, I can actually drill right through both surfaces and I've got the lower holes as well. Now on these Murrays, we're going to have to be careful here. On these Murrays, the gas tank is located right below the top of this cowl here. And after I shift the camera, because the tripod's in the way, 
uh, I'll show you how that's a problem. All right, so a little bit of a 180 flip in the room here. I'm gonna open the hood. And you can see the gas tank is directly below the cowl here. Now, what we have is a good inch and a half, inch and three quarters from the surface down to the tank. So as long as you're not some kind of lunatic with the drill and a nine inch bit going rah, you're not gonna hurt your tank. Um, you could use a depth stop on your drill or other kind of gauge to mark your depth if you're worried about it. You know, if you're a seasoned pro with the drill like I am, you've got no worries. You could stick a piece of wood or something in there just to serve as a stop or a piece of sheet metal. Just keep in mind the tank's there. And, you know, if you're a little concerned about it, remove the tank first. All right, let her rip tater chip. So first we're going to go through the hood and then we'll go through the cowl after. All right, so we can enlarge those with a larger hole later once I've selected my screws. And that has put marks into the cowl where we're going to drill down. And again, we're just going to make sure not to go too deep because we don't want to drill a hole in the tank. It's already ventilated, don't need another hole. Now, I might have to remove the dash or the tank or shift something around to get the bolts in there. Uh, this side I've got some access to, the other side not so good, so we'll have to figure that out on the fly. Alrighty. Now we can work on the interesting bit, which is trying to get those damn hinges in there. Weather's crazy. Anyways, I'm just trying to get a couple of these things started so I can let go of the hood without it falling right off the tractor. And try and figure out what I'm going to do about the hinges on the hard to reach side. Okay, so I'm not going to lie, that was a pain in the rear end to do with the tank in place. So I dropped the tank. That's really easy. Uh, two screws, right here and right here. On either side, they just go into bosses in the tank. Both sides take out four screws. Tank drops real easy access in there. And now the hinges are in. Okay, so there's the basics of it right there. Grab the hood, pick it up, and I'll just come to the side here just to show you the angle. It goes almost completely vertical before it hits the steering wheel. Now, we're probably gonna wind up with a prop rod or something, but that's the basics of the hinging. Now, the quick and easy solution for those guys that just want their hood to open properly is to go back to these pivot holes here and just get a couple of linch pins or something and stick them in there and then when you want to open your hood just pull the pins and lift. I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'll get to that next. Uh, the other word I wanted to mention is for those of you running headlights in one of these Murray grills or any tractor grill when you do it this way obviously you're going to have to reroute the wiring for the headlights because now the hood lifts way up so from the inside you're going to want to take the wiring back to about the hinge and then tape it or glue it or pin it along the inside of the hood at the top to the headlights so that you're not stretching wires or anything like that. <clears throat> now, since I can't quite leave well enough alone, I'm going to take this puppy to the next level. Okay, so it's all fine and good that we got the hood opening like a car hood, so to speak, opening properly. And like I said, for those of you that just want the quick and easy solution, slap a couple of pins into those two holes that the hood used to pivot on and aside from you know possibly running a new piece of wire you're done that easy you can add a prop rod or whatever the case may be that was like a 10 minute modification 20 or so if you're not completely prepared real sweet real easy and like two bucks worth of hinges big deal um, and I'm pretty happy with that but I'm gonna do more and I'm gonna save the more for the next video um, that'll give me a little bit more prep time and a little bit of time for you guys to let this sink in and maybe even give it a shot. So until next time, thanks for tuning in to Sprocket's Garage on YouTube. And until next time, take care of yourself.